new segment here on Chris Sims Unbuttoned. Yeah. It is time for Buy or Sell, presented by eBay Motors. Welcome to the family, eBay Motors. What's up, eBay Motors? <laughs> nice to have you. It's awesome. <laughs> hey, eBay Motors. We'll see. Um, Did right. I say that? Did I say that wrong? Or, no, no, no. Uh, okay. That was, that was true. Yeah. It was just kind of like, what's up? It was almost flirty. Yeah. Like, we don't need to flirt. Well, I've been here. known to be flirty before. <laughs> <laughs> I have been called that. <laughs> so, so, what, so what we'll do here, uh, thanks to eBay Motors, it's a segment where we'll take a narrative yeah. and we'll either buy it or we'll sell it. Yeah. It's like, are you buying this narrative or are you selling it, which I think oftentimes you do, but we'll see if that holds true in yep. this in A lot this of new narratives segment. right now, right? Around the league, for sure. So one that is affecting multiple teams out there is fighting mm. in training camps. And the narrative that's out there right now from a lot of coaches, it seems – is that a certain amount of fighting is actually very bad. I think for years it's like, oh, it's good, get the juices flowing, shows competitive spirit. But we're seeing in more and more training camps right now, coaches saying, eh, fighting's not great. We've heard it from your guy, Kyle Shanahan, that right. says he wants irritants, not fighters. And then specifically with the Saints, Trevor Penning was kicked out of practice last week for starting a fight for the third straight day. I think we got some video of that if you're watching on that new YouTube page or on Peacock as well. So three days in a row. And, uh, and and Dennis Allen was not was not happy about that from the rookie from Northern Iowa. He was very upset. Said you can't have that. Uh, it's just going crazy if you're he, watching it. Uh, he saw, uh, I love his I love his quote too. Uh, his favorite thing about football. Did you see that there? He legally assaulting the guy across from me. Yeah. Hey, that's it's, it's the only time <laughs> in life it's legal to actually yeah. assault a guy. So you might as well take advantage of it. Um, so yeah, what do you think here? Yeah. What do you I, think? I'm 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 gonna sell that narrative that it's a bad thing. Well, listen, you know everything's got you know different compartments that we could dive into, and of course we don't want melees breaking breaking out and guys getting hurt. But I can say from my own personal experience, maybe the best teams I were ever on were chippy, and there was fights in training camp. The mm. 2008 Tennessee Titans, number one seed in the AFC playoffs that year, I, I was never a part of a team that fought more. And we had a tackle. Uh, it, it, we had a lot of offensive linemen, just like a Trevor Penning, who were always – starting fights and doing that type of thing you think there was a guy who started one three days in a row well maybe when not three days in a row but maybe two or three times a week yeah. for sure <laughs> yes and, and not, not that they always got into this huge team fight but you know added some juice to the practice made it more competitive and that's where i think there's a lot of good to it you know again i know there's a line that we don't want to cross but the teams that i were on that never fought or never did anything man they just never seemed to have any life on the football field in the regular season either and then i you know the season got over and i just felt oh Man, we didn't have a lot of guys maybe that were totally invested or cared the way they should. Uh, the, the team I was on right uh, my rookie year, the 2003 Tampa Bay Buccaneers after they won the Super Bowl. You want to talk about a chippy bunch? What? Mm -hmm. That crew right there? I mean, if you don't think there was a little scuffle or fight every day in practice, you're crazy. We had a bunch of crazy guys on that defense, and then the offense had to try to, you know, match that intensity and slow them down. So to me, I find it to be a good thing. Again, I know there's a line that you don't want to cross here. I get that. I'm not trying to take both sides here. But usually it is the teams that have a lot of, well, we got a lot of alpha, physical, you know, you're not going to beat me on any play today type of guys. And then they're coached like that too to let's not be bullied by anybody. You know, let's yeah. pedal to the metal. Let's play that way. And uh, even being in New England as a as a you know an assistant coach and all that, you know, there was a chippy team there too. You don't think Tom Brady's a little chippy? We know he is, and a lot of other guys as well. So I look at it more as a positive thing, you know, than a negative thing. Yeah. I'd be more worried if man, uh, we didn't have one fight all training camp and everything was good. I'd go, well, I mean, I'm not sure you guys will be all that good this year during the season. I get that. You know you'll what I you'll mean? take too much fighting than no fighting. Exactly. I would. If you gave me one or the other, I'd yep. rather have too much than, than yes, the other way around. How about a, how about a coach fighting a player? Because <laughs> oh. the Giants had that in practice. Their offensive line coach, Bobby Johnson. <laughs> this is a great one. Pushing the linebacker, Cam Brown, down. Right. Uh, Brian Dayball said, sometimes that happens, but in no way do we condone that. So. Right. They didn't like. They didn't like that one. It was started by this hit by Saquon Barkley. So I guess here's Saquon trucking 
defensive back Aaron Robinson. Right, which, you know, he lowers the pads. He's coming in, you know, kind of hot. And I don't think he, like, necessarily, like, you know, you're, you're looking for thuds at yeah. this type of practice. You know, egos get, a, get, get bothered by this. Look, and as you can see, you know, Robinson's a little bit, like, not looking good on social media with this I type know. of thing. Looks so, like he was letting up a little bit or he wasn't going to tackle him full steam. Exactly. I don't know. Well, there, he's no, he can't tackle the running back. He's probably just got a thud, right? Yes. And, like, kind of, you know, emulate the tackle, give him a thud and get off. But what happens sometimes is, like, you're Saquon Barkley and you're going through the hole a million miles per hour and there's a lot of people on you that you don't run physical enough and you don't run hard enough. And so you're trying to run hard and you're not intending to run anybody over, but you're making cuts at full speed and you make a cut and you go, oh, gosh, there's a guy there and I'm, I can't slow down in time, so let me just lower it. And that's what starts. Now, I will say with the coaching thing, that is one you don't see very often. Yeah. And I would say in the <laughs> locker room, and, and I think Bobby Johnson has alluded to this already as far as the O-line coach, that this is – coaches aren't supposed to cross that line. Coaches aren't supposed to take sides. Coaches are the ones get in, try to separate it, do that. You know, uh, it's because the player can't fight back against the coach. And that's where it's a little unfair that way. And right. I think, you know, he knew he crossed, you know, one of those unwritten rules or code of honor in the NFL where, you know, again, we know most of the guys in the team could probably whoop Coach Johnson's butt. And there he was getting in a, you know, a few licks and, and pushes there a little bit. So that is one where you would rather actually have no co coaches fighting the team than, than too much coaches fighting. Well, you know, the, the, the coaches, the yes. Team. The yeah, coaches got to be the, the people that, that come in and are the cooler heads yes. prevail type of people. Well, the good thing about this, though, is that it at least produced a, a picture, a funny a meme that's on oh. the Internet now, if you're watching this again. <laughs> uh, John Feliciano being dragged oh, away from the fight by that. belly hanging out. But that new helmet, that new fangled helmet that they're wearing, the uh, padding over the helmet. Right, right. It, uh, is he is he grabbing the jersey or the head thing? It looks like he's grabbing that damn head pad, I think which he's makes it look the better. Head pad. He's but got maybe a bulge, I think. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, but I love like Daniel Jones just standing <laughs> over him too. Like, what the hell is going on here? Yeah, uh, he looks this, dead. Almost. He looks almost dead. I'm sure. And this is what's good about football and great about these type of situations, and uh, is that. I would bet later that day, team meeting that night, maybe the next morning, uh -huh. that they showed some of those pictures, maybe, yeah. and like they have some fun with it, and that's how you bring it back together. Right. And, hey, it's I know we're all out here fighting, we're all out here tired. You know, you, we talk about this every year. You get sick of seeing the same guy in front of you every day, yes. and he's starting to learn your moves and nuances, and you've learned his moves and nuances, and. You know, there's a day where you're tired or they're telling you not to go to full speed and that jerk's going full speed, and that's just part of it. Uh, but, again, like I said, I'd rather see too many fights than no fights at all. Last thing for me, yeah. it, does, does the offense always end up hating the defense and vice versa? Or, well, or do they make up after training? Camp? No, they make up. They do. They, they, uh, it, it's definitely one of those things. I, I really think it's actually you're at the end of the hate period of the defense and or offense, whatever you're on the opposite side of, because now we're going to start getting into preseason football. There's going to be limited practices that are going to be quite as intense anymore. Mm -hmm. And the monotony is finally going to get broken up. You're going to have a day off after the preseason game. You know, the day before the preseason game is going to be an easy day and a walkthrough. And then, of course, you know, for a lot of the veterans, the preseason game themselves is just going to be easy. It's going to be like go out there and warm up. Right. So that'll change the attitude of training camp. There's light at the end of the tunnel when the preseason game gets here. Oh, I used to be like, oh, gosh, there's a preseason game. Finally. Yeah. Thank God. Holy cow. It means we're, we're getting to the end and we can play somebody else. And, you know, Gruden or whoever is not going to micromanage me to death in practice. And I can just go out and play some football. And I think that's uh, always a positive for the players. You don't have to fight anyone anymore. Right. It's just like right. put away your boxing gloves and go, go play a game. So that was Buy or Sell presented by eBay Motors. You might not have the biggest garage, but with eBay Motors, you always have 122 million parts for your car right at your fingertips. Wow. eBayMotors.com. Let's ride. 122 million I was parts. Say, is there that many parts in a car? That's, I don't know. That's why you got it. That's why they're so expensive to but, go get them fixed. Yeah, like, I guess uh, so. I got to figure out what what one of 122 million parts I got to use right here. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.